Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So today I have my cafecito y mi aguita because we are going to chat. So this is my very first girl chat and um, or girl chat style video. Um, I've had this in my heart to do for a long time. Even when I took a break from my YouTube channel a few months ago, um, I was just thinking of different ways that I wanted to help you guys and also open an honest conversation because I think that there's a lot of content here on YouTube, but a lot of content is also really staged and really, um, I would say, unauthentic. And that's not what I want my channel to be. I wanna show you guys realness, rawness, transparency, authentic, authenticity. And I don't wanna paint you guys a picture. Everything I talk about on this channel, you best believe that I lived it, experienced it, or went through it. I'll never talk from a place of someone else's experience or what I heard down the grapevine. And if I don't know something, I will let you guys know. I am not a professional. I'm not a gynecologist. I have no medical or professional background. So I'm just sharing with you guys my PCOS story, how I found out and my symptoms. So if that's something that you are interested in, then just keep watching. So PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome. And Google defines this as a hormonal disorder causing enlarged ovaries with small cysts on the outer edges. The cause of polycystic ovary syndrome isn't well understood, but may involve a combination of genetic and environmental factors. So disclaimer, I know what I'm about to say is cray cray, but it's my story, it's what I did, and it's what happened. So my first year of marriage, um, I was on different kinds of birth control. So I tried the NuvaRing, and I also tried the um, IUD, which is like a little T-shaped little device that they put in your uterus, if I'm not mistaken. And um, it has to be put in by a professional and taken out by a professional. I got the kind that didn't have hormones in it. And I thought that I wouldn't feel a lot of changes within my body because I went the non-hormonal route of an IUD. Um, I just started to feel so uncomfortable. I don't know if it was placed incorrectly inside of me because it would always poke. The T has two little strings at the bottom and they're pretty long strings and I felt like those strings would always poke my insides and it would really be uncomfortable in every sense. And um, it started to become really uncomfortable even when um, I was intimate with my husband. We were newlyweds and I just was not comfortable and I started to have a lot of mood swings. I was very emotional. I don't know to this day if I can credit that back to just being married for the first time and just like the change of going from, you know, single like legally to married and like going from a relationship to marriage. Um, so I really didn't know or if it was the IUD, but I remember I've never been like, I remember being so, so emotional all the time, like enraged. Like that's how I felt with the IUD. And my period pain was extremely painful. Um, I felt so uncomfortable. And so I got to a point where I was like, I need this thing out of me like right now. And I can't even wait for a gynecologist. It was the middle of the night and I was struggling at the time, which I'm still struggling with, insomnia. And I have to check because I'm not sure if that's something that you can pin back to PCOS, but it's something that I struggle with. And I remember, um, you know, at the time I was really struggling with my sleep and I was up until like four in the morning and I would tell my husband, I need to get this thing out. Um, but then I, I just had this brilliant idea to check on YouTube how to take this IUD out on your own at home, which was crazy guys, because I could have hurt myself. It's so far up in your uterus that you could really hurt yourself pulling it out. It can like puncture your inside. You could even bleed internally. Like there was so many risks. And I was a 20 year old at the time. I got married very young. And I don't know, I was just ignorant to the risk that that had. So I took it out and um, don't even ask me how I did that because that was a whole nother story. But I was able to take it out and I assumed that it was lower than it should have been because many people, even my gyno, was like, how did you even get that out? He was telling me like in his 37 years of profession and of like career, he's never had anyone take out their own IUD. So I felt really stupid in his chair and I was really embarrassed, to say the least. And so long story short, I took it out. I woke up my husband and I was like, babe, I got it out. And guys, I instantly felt better. If you guys want 
my story on the IUD. I can definitely give you guys that story because I think it's very real and like let's be honest, birth control is something that is a hot topic in a woman's life and I think more people should be speaking about this. And so long story short, um, I waited about a year before I saw my gyno again and even my mom and my husband were like, hey, you should see a gyno just to make sure you didn't hurt yourself. But I was so hard-headed and I've always been hard-headed and I was like, I'm fine, I don't feel nothing, I'm okay. The first year of marriage, I never, like God never spoke to me about a baby or a child. Um, whenever he would speak to me, he would speak to me about um, my ministry, my marriage, um, other things and qualities about me, things he wanted to do through me, but it was never baby. So I kind of like didn't think I should probably see a gynecologist, make sure I'm okay, and just check if I can even bear children and if this is something that um, is like all in order in my life. Like, I don't know. And so the second year of marriage, it was like nonstop from the moment we be we had been married for two years on I have not stopped hearing God speak to me about a child and it was just word after word I don't even think there's been a word in between that God talks to me about something else but a baby and how much promise this baby has and purpose and all these amazing things but at the time I'm 21 22 so I'm like um I'm still not ready God so I almost wanted to just push it in the back of my mind and not think about babies, but I also feel like how irresponsible is it that I'm not even preparing when this is something on God's heart for me. When I went to my gyno, I wasn't going in to talk about PCOS or to talk about um, anything specific to PCOS because I didn't even think about that as a possibility for me. I was actually going in to check my uterus and make sure that I didn't leave no piece of the IUD in me or that that everything was in order because of what I had done with the IUD and that birth control method. And so he's like, hey, we should probably send you to an ultrasound because we need to make sure that there's no fragments of the IUD still in you and that you didn't hurt yourself. So I was like, great, we'll do that. So I went to the ultrasound um, a couple of days later and um, the lady asked me, hey, are you getting your period soon? Because I guess my lining was a little thick. I said, yeah, I think my period is coming in a few days. And she said, oh, okay, so then everything seems normal. And I was kind of like, okay, that was a weird question. And then she tells me, hey, your doctor will be in touch. Everything looks fine. Um, your doctor will be in touch. And I was like, okay, great. And then I was like, should I worry? Like, are you seeing anything that I should know about right now? And she's like, well, I can't read you the results. Um, I can show you the screen, but I can't. She can't give me the result. It was my doctor's job to do. And so she just told me, um, no, I think because you're getting your period, like, you know, whatever, your, your lining's a little thick. And I, I really don't know what she was referring to, but I'm assuming that it's somewhere inside of me, you know, I don't know. So um, she told me, you know, most times like the doctor, when they call you is because they have news for you, but if they don't call you, don't even worry about it. Don't freak out and just go home and relax. Like this is totally fine. And she says like the IUD didn't do anything inside of you, you're good. So I, again, I'm not thinking PCOS, I'm not thinking any other thing. I'm saying, I'm thinking, oh, okay. It's like, I didn't hurt myself while I did that very dumb thing of removing my IUD on my own, so I'm great. So after that ultrasound, guys, I didn't hear anything back. Um, like four months went on and I didn't hear anything from my doctor. So I was like, Eddie would ask me, hey, did your guy know ever call you back about that? I just wanna make sure you're okay. And I was like, no, honestly, so, and I told Eddie, they usually call you if they have like negative results, but I guess I'm fine and we're good, like to proceed as normal, nothing's wrong. And one day my dad calls me and um, I had recently saved my gynecologist's number because I said, hey, like if I ever need to call them, I wanna have their number registered in my phone. So I had done that maybe a few hours to days before my dad had called me. And my dad calls me and leaves me a voicemail. So I go to check my voicemail. And since I had just recently saved my gyno's number after forever, tell me why I'm, see I'm looking through my voicemails and they had called me at least eight or 10 times since March and I'm already in May. 
so instantly you guys already know I freaked out I played the first voicemail that they left me and it went along the lines of like hey Miss Rosa we're trying to get in contact with you we've sent you multiple letters to your home address call us if we have the wrong address but the doctor has results and we would like to read them to you please call to schedule an appointment and so forth so from March all the way to May that was like the tone of the voicemail just like come in we have results we need to read them and so I remember towards the end, like the most recent voicemails were more like, hey, we really need to tell you your results. We really need to share with you these results. Please call us. Like if we have the wrong number, please let us know, like whoever's on the line or whatever. But they're basically saying we have tried to locate you and contact you. And because it was Saturday, my doctor's office was not open. So I was able to log into an app that shares the results of any of your tests. So what I read that like obviously stuck out to me, everything else was gibberish because I'm not a doctor or a professional, but the clearest thing was both ovaries are visualized. The left ovary has multiple peripheral follicles consistent with PCOS. And then all the other information about the rest of my, um, you know, reproductive system. I think the first thing that I thought was I'm going to struggle with my fertility and that freaked me out. I'm not going to lie. When I read the symptoms, I know I've had symptoms for years, guys. Since I was a teenager, I had symptoms, but they got worse when I got married and around like when I entered like young adulthood, which was like 21. And so, um, well, actually, when, when I entered young adulthood, it was more like 20 years old when I got married. So when I read that, I called my mom and um, she was on FaceTime crying with me and I was like, mom, like, um, I just always felt like something was off and I had this, at the time it was an unrealistic scare of being infertile because I had no diagnosis that would even put me in a, put me in a, what's it called, like a position to even fear that. Um, but I just feel like that has been one of my greatest fears. That's just something that scares any woman that wants to be a mama one day and that wants to start a family so i was freaking out you guys but um my mom spoke life into me and reminded me like god gave you all these promises about a baby and you know like his word's gonna pass you have nothing to worry about but just take the necessary steps to you know collaborate with your doctor and just and even with god and like take care of your body heal your body and and you know do right by it i'm not gonna lie it was easier said than done after I got my diagnosis, like I read it, um, I scheduled an appointment, I went to my gyno and he's like, yeah, like you have PCOS, um, I could put you on birth control, but if you want to start a family, that's kind of counterproductive. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm done with birth control. Like I've had a really bad experience with birth control. Like honestly, I don't want birth control. And um, I just want to prepare my body to start trying one day. I asked him like I want to ask you something and I'm afraid of the answer but I need to know like you know am I infertile or does this affect my fertility fertility and he told me he's like you need to try for at least a year before you come in a lot of people try for longer and it's not that they're infertile it's just you know they can't I don't know there's a lot of different factors but they're saying like hey like it's just not lining up because it takes a lot to ba make a baby honestly like I've looked into that and I'm like wow like babies are miracles of God and the way it happens is just beautiful and amazing and magnificent. It's crazy. And so he's like, just try for a year and come back. So I'll come back to the whole trying part because I'll tell you my story and where I am right now in that process and how I feel. But um, after that, um, I went home and that was it. Like I wasn't given any other option or help other than birth control. Not at one point did my gyno talk about my symptoms how to alleviate those symptoms, how to reverse PCOS, like nothing else was told to me. So I went like PCOS is just fertility or infertility. That's it. But there's so much more to this topic and there's so many other ways that this affects a woman besides possible infertility or just struggles with fertility. So there's different symptoms to PCOS. I can read to you guys like the generic ones and then I'll tell you which ones I struggle with. According to Google, people with PCOS experience abnormal menstruation, absence of menstruation, heavy menstruation, irregular menstruation, short and light menstruation, or spotting. And then you can struggle with obesity, being overweight or weight gain. Um, in your skin, you can struggle with acne or oily skin. And also common, it says, infertility, depression, inappropriate male features, loss of scalp hair, or unwanted hair. 
Um, I'm sure that there are other, um, what's it called? There are other symptoms because every single year new information is coming forth about this condition and this syndrome. The ones that I struggle with in my symptoms are, um, I have a very heavy period. I thankfully, like I do thank God for this. I, I'm not irregular in my period. I'm very regular and um, I never skip a period. They're just heavy, like really heavy and long. So for the weight part of this condition, I definitely gained weight um, since I got married to now and also since high school to now. And I am still overweight. I've lost thankfully 16, 17 pounds since December. Um, so I don't know where I wanna be. I just wanna be healthy and I wanna be able to kick this thing in its butt. And um, for my skin, honestly, I, I don't struggle with my skin at all, thank God. I definitely struggled with depression last year. Really, really aggressive depression and anxiety. And um, that was really rough. And I think I've always really had underlying depression and high functioning depression in my youth, but I just didn't know what it was. I just thought I was always like heartbroken and I don't know, boy problem, friend problems, but it really wasn't that. And then it says inappropriate male features. I wouldn't say I have that. <laughs> um, loss of scalp hair, definitely. I have lost a lot of scalp hair, especially around my edges here. My arms have always been hairy, so I don't know if it's because I'm a Latina. Actually, yesterday I probably should have not trimmed them, but I definitely trimmed my hair yesterday because it can get really dark. Yeah, like your hair grows fast um, with like PCOS because it is ultimately a hormonal imbalance. PCOS has a lot to do with high testosterone levels in a female. These are the symptoms for hormonal imbalances, sleep problems, foggy thinking, pr problems with digestion, swings in mood, anxiety and depression, headache, vaginal dryness, loss of sex drive, stubborn cases of acne, food cravings, overwhelming and continuing fatigue, weight gain, hot flashes, night sweats, changes in your breast, Increased susceptibility, increased susceptibility to infections. So there's so many symptoms, guys, that are tied to PCOS or hormonal imbalance or all these other things. Again, I'm not a professional, so please do your own research. Out of this list, I also struggle, again, like I said earlier in the video, with sleep problems. I am a huge insomniac, and I am canceling that in the name of Jesus. But as of now, like I have really struggled with that for a while. I definitely have foggy thinking. Like I'll go to record a video. I'm speaking and I don't, I'm just rambling and I don't even know what I'm thinking about. Um, I do have problems with digestion. I used to be a very extremely bloated person. I probably thought I was bigger than I was because I was always bloated. Thankfully, um, I'm not struggling with too much bloatedness as of right now, but um, when I am totally going buck wild and reckless with my eating, I definitely see the bloating and digestive issues come back like this. Um, I do struggle with uh, mood swings, anxiety, and depression. I've always, I think since I got married, I have struggled with vaginal dryness, and I would, I thought that it was my fault or my husband's fault. Like, I really did not know what was going on because um, I'm like, that has never been an issue. And now that I know that it is something caused by hormonal imbalances, um, it helped me understand my body and be gracious to myself because obviously those things can cause discomfort in intimacy and sex. So I was freaked out for a while and it has to do with hormonal imbalance. You can lose your sex drive. There was a while where I did not even care about sex and that comes and goes. There are seasons where I feel regular and normal and others where I really, the last thing I think about is sex or intimacy. So I think when I'm working on my hormones and I'm balancing them, I do feel like that comes back and I just feel so much better. It's so crazy how, you know, just how like much this can affect you in so many ways other than just let's say infertility, there's so many other things to this thing. And also like food cravings sometimes like I would like need sugar, need sugar, need sugar, and sugar is definitely not helpful when you have PCOS. I do struggle with fatigue. Um, I told you guys about the weight gain. I definitely have hot flashes. I always have to have my AC on at night. Rain or shine, summer or winter, the AC is on. I've definitely seen um, changes in my chest 
and um, infections. I mean, even in high school, I used to have like a lot of ear infections. Um, I would have upper respiratory infections, sore throat, like um, throat infection. Like I've had it all and it's cr sinus infections a lot. And so thankfully, I mean, that wasn't that like long ago, but the last time I got sick was like two months ago, but I used to get sick so often. Um, so this winter was pretty good for me, but honestly, like it's crazy to think that this could all be caused by something completely different than weather or whatever else I thought that were causing my infections. Right now, guys, I'm still learning about it um, as much as I can. I've, I've um, bought books, I've read articles, and I've looked into um, different resources, and I've tried to talk to other girls that have it, other women that struggle with this. I do believe that it should be a topic that more people are talking about because women need to feel supported through this. Um, I feel like this is not something to be ashamed of or embarrassed of as much as it has so many symptoms that are uncomfortable. There's just no way you'll be able to get through this if you don't face it. And I was in denial guys for so long. From the time I found out that I had it in May, I didn't do a single thing about it until November. I went six whole months sabotaging my body, eating whatever I wanted, eating sugar upon sugar. I'm not sleeping like I was like in such denial where I was almost like if I don't deal with this thing it'll just go away but guys it doesn't just go away without you putting in the work without you being intentional about um, doing different things to help your body your body needs it and I think for a long time I was sabotaging myself I kept gaining weight like I literally went from 160 to 170 within that six months um, and so I just kept putting on the weight, feeling worse and worse. My blood sugar levels were crazy. Like I just felt so sick and I went to film a video and um, I said this in another video, but um, I was, I had already started doing YouTube again and I went to film a video and I was so swollen. I had gained so much weight. I couldn't even recognize myself and I felt so sick. Like at this point I felt sick and I remember being like, I can't film anymore. I can't pretend that this is not happening. Eddie, I feel so sick and I need to face this thing. I need to face it. And although it was scary since I have faced it, the more I talk about it, the less shameful it feels, the less uncomfortable it is to talk about, the less fear I have. I know what my God has promised me. I know what my God says about me. I know my husband thinks I'm beautiful and he loves me. And I love myself enough to help it and take care of it. Um, I don't do it well. Sometimes I mess up and forget that I have PCOS and just live my life without thinking about it. This can be something you just think about every day, but it cannot be something you don't even think about. This is happening to your body and a lot of the things you feel can probably be tracked back to this. So if you think that any of these symptoms are like yours or apply to you or you can relate, please reach out to your gyno. Do not self like diagnose, go to a professional um, get checked out and you know what if you do have it everything's gonna be okay and I believe God is gonna be with you through that and you just have to put from your part and I know God will do the rest my motto in life is you do your best God will do the rest I do believe in healing I do believe that God is gonna heal me and that um, there's gonna be such a great testimony out of this but in the meantime I do have to put from my part um, and the juicy question is, are we trying to have a baby? When are we going to get pregnant? What's happening with that? The honest truth is I'm not trying for a baby just yet. Um, honestly, at one point I was almost like desperate. Like I was like, Eddie, I think we need to start trying because just in case I struggle with infertility, it's going to take me a while to get pregnant. So I might as well start now. First of all, I was speaking death already. I was speaking negativity and death over my fertility and over my womb and over my process of, you know, conceiving this child that God has promised me. And second, I I wasn't in the headspace where I, I'm ready for a baby. I long for a baby and I believe this is God's timing. It was more like I was acting out of fear and even my husband had to stop me and was like, hey, like that's just not the right reason to try for a baby. And this could be really... Just not a good time if you do get pregnant because you're not walking in it with the right headspace and in, from a different place. You know what I mean? 
So um, I'm not trying for a baby. I don't feel like it's the timing right now. I do feel like the time is drawing near. So I am excited about that season of my life. And I believe that whatever is on the other side of all of this um, is going to be goodness and God's um, faithfulness and promises over my life. But, um, you know, I, I do my best to just remind myself of everything that God has said to me and also try to invest myself in just preparing my body, even if I'm not trying right now, just preparing my body, my mind, my heart for that season because I want to do it well and I want to be a mom that honors God with the way I parent. And for that, I just, you know, I'm praying for it. And I want to show you guys something. Um, I was at church a couple weeks ago and I just felt the Lord tell me um, during altar call, he spoke to my heart and he told me like, go get a onesie and I just want you to start praying over this child that I have promised you. And after church, um, I remember telling Eddie, hey, I need to go to Target. He's like, for what, babe? You always want to buy stuff. You always want to go and just spend money. Or go like I'm, I'm the type that I'll go to Walmart just to see what's there. And then maybe I'll think about buying it. Like My husband will tell me, like, hey, what is it that you need from Target? I'm like, I don't know. I just feel like I'm going to find something that I want to buy. He's like, no, 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 no. We're not going to Target. That's how you spend more money than you need to. But I was like, no, babe, I need to go because I need to get a onesie. It has to be white. My husband was like, a onesie? What are you talking about? And I was like, I just felt like God told me, like, I need to buy a onesie. And I did buy the onesie. And you how cute it is. This little peanut thing. Um, so I bought this onesie. And the instructions that God gave me was just to pray over this onesie and to start praying for my child. So um, that's what I've done. And every time I pray over my child, I look at this onesie. I feel I'm overwhelmed with emotions. I feel God's presence so strongly and I just know my child is going to be, um, my first child is going to be such a blessing on my children because I believe that God um, has been clear about his words of fruitfulness over me and Eddie's life about children. So really right now I'm just in a season where I am physically trying to do the best I can to prepare my body, mentally, um, emotionally, spiritually, but I know that God will make everything beautiful in his time. So I just share this. Because I want to encourage you, if you are struggling with infertility, my heart goes out to you. I will be praying for you. I just want to encourage you from the bottom of my heart to believe in God's promises, to believe in God's heart that he wants us to multiply and, um, and be fruitful. And that's just such a gift. And so I just want to encourage you not to give up hope, not to give up faith, to believe that God um, has prepared you for this and it will happen in this time. But in the meantime, like stay encouraged, trust in your Lord, trust in God and reach out to other women that can relate because you can't do it alone. You need community. And I think sometimes we are we feel lonelier than we are. We feel more isolated than we really are. And um, in these situations and in these kind of tests and trials, you need a tribe that will be able to encourage you. And when you feel weak or when feel, fear starts to settle in. Um, that they can remind you that your God is faithful, trust in God, and um, I know that he will fulfill the desires of your heart because they're in God's heart, um, and God's will for us is perfect. His plans are perfect. I know they're not easy to understand. We are not designed to understand them, so don't like, don't break night trying to figure it all out. Just take a step back, rest, and in this season, just take care of you and just prepare, but and be graceful to yourself because um, it's out of your control and you're doing the best you can. And I'm just so proud of you. There could be women in your circle that have it or are going through something similar. And if you would just be vulnerable first, you would be so surprised at how common this is and how many women are willing to share their stories and talk to you and encourage you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up so I know you like this kind of content. And if you enjoyed me or the topic or just this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would love to have you be a part of this family. This is totally a space of authenticity, transparency, honesty, courage. Like I just will always speak from a place of experience. I will never come on here trying to talk to you from a place of I guess like lack of experience. Um, I just want to share my heart and encourage you to share yours too to another woman that needs it. Um, without further ado, thank you so much for watching. Stay encouraged. Know that you're not alone and that you're not the only one going through this. Um, if you would like to connect or reach out through um, another like platform, 
hit me up on Instagram here on the screen. I'm putting my username. I would love to connect that way. And without further ado, that is it for this video. Bye guys.